Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we are going to be building this form here. It's a button that when clicked opens up a file prompt and allows us to display this wonderfully colorful chicken. But um, the cool thing is, is this is all happening in the browser. We haven't uploaded the photo anywhere yet, so we're doing a preview of the image. So to get started, let's go over to the code. So I've just made a commit to basically rewind everything I've done to build that so that we can rebuild it together. So I'll link in the description if you want to follow along. There'll be a starting point link. And what we're going to do is basically take this component here and we're working inside of Next.js but we're just going to focus on this one index page. And we're going to add in all of the pieces needed to, to build that demo that I just showed. So what we've got here is a home component that's returning a form that has nothing in it but the word form. So to get started, why don't we add an input field to collect the actual file? So this will be an input of type file. And to be honest, that's all we need to get up and running. So that will give us this choose file here. But um, you saw in the video, it didn't just say choose file like this standard JavaScript form, HTML form input. It was a nice round button that said um, add image. So what we actually want to do is hide this. So we'll just say style display none so that we no longer have this button on the screen. But how are we actually going to trigger it so that it opens the, the prompt to choose which files we want? To do that, what we're going to do is add a button and it will just say add image like this. And so I've already styled this uh, basically all buttons to look big and round like this um, and to, to center the text in the middle. So that's just coming from a global style here that, that makes it big and round. So how do we attach this together to the file input to trigger it opening up? To do that, we're going to first have to create a reference to this input. So we'll do that up here using the use ref hook. So we'll say, um, file input ref is equal to use ref. And because we're working in TypeScript, we want to tell it what type we're working with. So we're dealing with an HTML input element. So we can just put this up here in angly brackets so we know what we're dealing with. And then we're going to add an on click event to the button. And this will call this function. But we want to receive an event so that we can cancel the default um, or prevent the default action from occurring. So we'll just say event.preventDefault. And then using this ref that we created, we want to be able to um, basically simulate a click on this input. So first of all, we have to attach the ref to the input. So we'll say ref is equal to file input ref. And with that in place, we can now come up here and we can say, file input ref dot current, so whatever the current ref is, and we're just going to click it. So with this in place, clicking this button um, doesn't submit the form because we said prevent default and it opens up um, the file prompt to choose what file we want to attach. So when the user chooses a file, we need to store it somewhere. So we're going to put it in state. So let's create some state for that. And we will call this the image and set image. And that is the use state hook. And we want to um, set its uh, TypeScript type. So the type we're going to be working with here is a file. Because that's what we basically get when the user chooses a file. So to put a value in state, we need to add an on change event to the input. And that's going to call this uh, this event here, this uh, callback function which receives the event and what we want to do is basically um, using the event we want to access its target and the target is the basically the element that triggered the event, the input and we want back from this target one file. So we're going to say const file is equal to event.target and target has something called files on it. It always gives it to you um, it's not an array, it's a type called a file list. But because files can sometimes be chosen multiple at a time, we're just going to access the first one of that. And then we're going to put an if statement. So we're going to say if there's a file, 
what we'll do is we will set the image to, to be file. Otherwise, we'll set the image to be null, just like this. So you won't really be able to see yet that the chicken's being put inside of that state because we don't have any sort of preview set up. So that's what I want to work on right now. But um, before we do that, I just want to do one quick thing. I want to limit it to images only because I don't want people choosing PDFs or CSV files or anything like that. So we're going to add a prop called accept and we're just going to say it accepts um, images or sorry, image slash star. So this is the MIME type for basically all images start with this slash star. And what that does is when you click this, now it doesn't let you choose PDFs. It only allows you to choose images, but we're going to go one step further and we're just going to put a check in JavaScript as well so that we are sure that um, no one sort of messed with this and, and deleted this prop to allow for other types of, of files and whatnot. So we're going to also check that the file type that allows you to access the MIME type programmatically is equal to, or basically starts with image. So this is five characters long. So we're just going to use substring to basically start at character zero and grab five and check that it's equal to image. So this will allow us to sure that the, be sure that the user chose an image. So because we're putting this in state, what I want to do is basically extract from this um, some sort of preview that we can display to the user. And the way we're going to do that is by using use effect. So that is another hook that is basically triggered whenever a uh, data value changes in, a, in um, whatever parameter you pass in this array here. So we're going to be looking for changes to the image state. And when that occurs, what we're going to do is do another check. So if there's an image, we're going to do one thing. Otherwise, we're going to do something else down here. And we want to basically extract from this image. Um, it's called, uh, basically, we're going to extract a string that represents the image. And we're going to use something called a file reader to be able to grab that. We're going to get it as something called a data URL. So first, we're going to create an instance of the file reader. So file reader, you see it popped up. This is something that just comes from JavaScript. I haven't had to import anything fancy here. And what the reader does is we basically tell it to um, read as a data URL. And what do we want to read as a data URL? This file here, the image, just like that. And what we need to do now is basically know when it's when the when the load has happened when it's ready. So right before this, we're gonna um, set an event. So this is on load end, and when that event happens, we are going to call this function here, and we're basically going to take the result of this reader and put it into state somewhere. So we need to create some new state, and we're gonna call this the preview. So set preview is equal to use state. And um, the type of data we're putting in state here will be a string. This uh, data URL is the image represented as a, as a base64 string. So we've set up TypeScript correctly. And so now we can come here and we can say set preview, and we're going to set it equal to the reader.result. And you'll see TypeScript freaking out a little bit, saying argument of type string or array buffer is not assignable to my state because I said state was going to be a string. The reason for that is because there's actually another function, uh, reader dot read as array buffer. And um, we didn't use that, but that would give us an array buffer. And because we know it's a string, because we called this data URL, we can just tell TypeScript, hey, as string, we're gonna be receiving a string. Um, calm yourself down, don't worry about it. And let's just handle the negative case here. When there is no image, we will set the preview back to null. So if everything worked as uh, hoped, inside of this uh, preview will be a string that represents the image. If you want to see what it looks like, why don't we just put it in a paragraph tag here, the preview. It's going to look crazy, actually. And it's going to be 
color white because I have this black background here. So let's put the preview in this n lovely chicken. So here's, oh shoot, here's this crazy string that um, represents a base 64 version of the image that was chosen. Can't do too much with this, but what we can do with that is basically put it in an image source. So we can put the preview in here and doing that, the image basically knows how to display this base 64 uh, representation of the image. But I only want to show the image or the button, not both at the same time. So what we can do is we can say, if there's a preview, basically show the image, otherwise show the button. Save that, prettier will make it look pretty. And then we can come back and we see the chicken. So I'll just refresh and we'll add this uh, wonderful hairless dog. Um, see how this dog's super squished? It's because I'm squishing a rectangular image inside of a, a square circle where the borders have been rounded to make it look like a, did I say a square circle? A square image where it's been turned into a, into a circle. So there's a way to get around this actually. It is using, if I can remember it, a CSS property called, uh, what's it called? Object fit. And we want to cover. And what this does is you can see it, it basically makes sure that it covers the whole div that it's in, but it doesn't mess with the aspect ratio at all. So that allows you to basically make a square and allowing us to do a circle um, of an image that isn't square. And um, if we were using something like Cloudinary, we'd probably use Cloudinary to crop it, but we're working with the image locally here. So we don't have that sort of image manipulation available to us, but this little CSS trick allows us to uh, display it correctly. So we can refresh and we can try the chicken. It should look uh, nice and chickeny right now. Um, so why don't we just add one more thing where when we click this image, it basically unsets everything so that we could choose a new one. So we will just come to this image and we're going to add an on click event. Um, I don't need to prevent default here because there is no default action when you click an image. So we're just going to say when this occurs, we're going to set the image to null. We don't need to also set the preview because setting the image to null um, after it renders will basically trigger the use effect, which when there's no image will set the preview back to null as well. So this preview is fully controlled here in this use effect. We just have to basically set the image and it takes care of the rest. So if we come back here, um, we'll add an image, we'll, we'll add the hairless dog, we'll click it to get rid of that and then we can go and we can add a chicken and it all works. So at this point, you've allowed the user to, to choose a file without showing them the default um, input file type they can choose their image. We've restricted it to images. And then when they choose the image, we give them a nice preview with the proper aspect ratio. And at this point, you have the file in state and you could post that to a server. You could post that to Cloudinary. Um, you could post this wherever you want. You could do direct to S3 um, and save it for use later on. But that wasn't the point of this video. We just wanted to work with file inputs with image previews and using this cool class uh, called the file reader. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, take care. Bye.